Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Errol Shakiri, and you are watching the debate magazine Click Plus on TV21. On today's show, we will not discuss about the current political events in the country and in the region, but we will discuss about the project that a few years ago were, was introduced as a strategic investment in the country. The project was introduced uh, back then by the former Prime Minister, Mr. Zoran Zaev. We are talking about Skopje Technological City. Uh, this project was anticipated to have a huge impact, a dramatic impact on the uh, North Macedonian economy by increasing the GDP by 1.5 billion of euros in, in the first three years. And this would happen by bringing around 100 IT companies in the country and creating around 800 uh, immediate, immediate new jobs. Uh, when we, when we are talking about the project, we are talking about uh, economy, technology. We are talking about uh, movie and, uh, and film and, and uh, music studios uh, and, and much, a lot more things that could impact the, the country and the economical growth on, the, on, on this country. So it was anticipated, basically, uh, North Macedonia to be a regional hub, to be put on the world's map as a regional hub for economic and uh, technological uh, uh, investments. Uh, when we are talking about the, the, the STP, uh, one of the major partners and the shareholders of the, of, of the project is uh, Rich Company. When we say Rich Company, we, we think about the former government of, of Pennsylvania, Mr. Thomas Rich, who uh, during the presidency of George W. Bush was appointed as the first ever Secretary for Homeland Security of United States uh, of America. Uh, more, uh, for more details about the project and, and, and uh, Rich uh, Global, we will talk with the president of, of uh, Rich Global, uh, Mr. Steve Kohler, uh, Kohler who is uh, with us uh, tonight. Uh, Steve, good morning to you. I believe it's uh, currently 10 a.m. Uh, in, in the States, and thank you for being uh, part of our show. Uh, good morning, and thank you. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here, Errol, and I'm happy to talk to you a little bit about uh, STP and Ridge Global, so, so thank you. Thank you. Steve, let's start first with uh, what's, what exactly does Ridge Global do, and what is your role in, in, in this company? Well, Ridge Global is a uh, Washington-based advisory company founded originally by our chairman, currently uh, former Governor Tom Ridge. I've been affiliated with Ridge Global for many years, uh, serving as its president currently, and have been affiliated with Tom Ridge uh, off and on through his public and private life since he was governor of the state of Pennsylvania. Uh, at Ridge Global, our fundamental function is security and specifically cyber resiliency and security for our clients, commercial clients uh, that are based uh, globally and primarily in the US, but we have clients offshore as well. And uh, we provide uh, a level of support as it relates to all things cyber, uh, Errol, and I would add that we typically engage a number of technologies to support our advisory work from all over the world. So basically that's what we do, but there are a lot of efforts that we've been involved with that actually go well beyond cybersecurity for things like the broader economic impact of a project like uh, STP about your relationship and experience working with uh, the government reach I mean it, it must be quite an honor working for this distinguished gentleman uh, no, no question about that you know Tom Ridge is a, a globally known uh, individual uh, a leader and uh, he, he's been that throughout his entire public and private career and in fact uh, as you mentioned in the introduction former uh, governor of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania at which time he, he led his administration there with the strong fundamentals around uh, economic development and technology in particular and engaging the educational community. So it was a pleasure to work in his administration at that time where I headed up uh, an organization called the Governor's Action Team, which was responsible for driving the economic development interests of the state of Pennsylvania. And then since then, as he became, as you mentioned, uh, the first Secretary of the Department of Homeland Security, and in fact built the department here in the United States, the largest government, civilian government reorganization since World War II, where he combined 22 agencies under one and 
created uh, what is existing today as the U.S. Department of Homeland Security. So at that time, our focus shifted into the areas of security and technologies of support security as a company. And so we continued to uh, enjoy a relationship, uh, professional and personal, between Tom Ridge and myself that exists to this day. A little bit more about the full scope of STP Capital Partners and especially the, the Skopje Technology Park. This is a major foreign investment that uh, it is in the consideration by, by the government now. And why exactly are you involved and how? Well, we, we became introduced to this project several years ago. Uh, it was a very uh, interesting concept and not the, the concept of the park with its focus on technology and uh, the integration, if you will, of technology, hospitality and cultural interests, as well as uh, entertainment uh, in an effort to build an economic development platform that would exist in that region. And to be honest, Errol, we were quite familiar with the general concept because it was similar to things that we had done when Tom Ridge was governor and in his administration in the state of Pennsylvania and elsewhere globally. We had advised clients on looking at economic development strategies that, that use a number of different technology platforms to help build a capability that's not just a project, but it's actually embedded in the fabric of the community. So for all those kinds of reasons, we were attracted to the concept. And as we got more involved in learning about North Macedonia and the North Macedonia people, having met several over the years, and this project, we became quite interested and agreed to commit to, to support it. And then again, as I move forward to where we are today, our effort to support it is oriented around a lot of the security aspects. But we think that this kind of project can have not just impact within the country, but regionally. And in our view, uh, regionally, as in Western Europe and throughout, uh, given its location, the geography of North Macedonia. So for a lot of those reasons, we were very interested. And now STP Partners today has attracted a number of strategic interests, joint ventures that are in discussions. And so we continue to move forward, hoping to finalize uh, the necessary additional relationships with the government in uh, North Macedonia to, to initiate the project. Now you are a shell shareholder. Uh, can you tell us uh, where the funding is coming from and uh, what are the, the benefits for the people, for the citizens of North Macedonia? Sure. Uh, yes, uh, the uh, investors and the discussions by the partners are underway and a number of the shareholders are directly involved in these. Uh, various joint ventures looking at investors from uh, all over the globe, a lot of them uh, in North America and elsewhere, would be making the, it'd be a privately investing in the project with uh, uh, the concurrence and collaboration with the government using things like uh, uh, foreign exchange zones or economic development zones to support this. I, I think that, and these discussions are ongoing, so the capital would come in from uh, exterior resources primarily. And that's an important point, Errol. I know that uh, one of the interests that attracted us when we talked to this project early on was the idea that it would attract foreign direct investment. I guess that's effectively what, we're, what we would be into the country, which is always good as an economic boost. And so we could see the value from that perspective but also as we uh, look to uh, gain some additional interest from other potential partners that we're talking with. And I think that some of these have evolved to the point where we've got letters of commitment for some of that investment. So as you say now, uh, uh, Ridge Global is committed of uh, making an uh, investment here in uh, and building a cyber security project here in North Macedonia through the STP project. Uh, if I may ask Steve, why, why North Macedonia? Well, I'll tell you, there's a number of things that interested us uh, and what we do as a company in our day by day business is we advise clients on their level of cyber preparedness and cyber resiliency. And so we looked at this project and part of that advisory work that we do, we looked at this project in North Macedonia as an opportunity and a potential location where we could look to establish 
a cyber range as a part of the development STP. And a cyber range is a lot of things, but fundamentally it's the integration of some technologies that are relevant as it relates to cyber protection, but also it engages educational interests, uh, perhaps local universities together with other universities that specialize in this to create an environment, a physical environment where we can uh, train, teach and actually use uh, cyber resources to help support the marketplace in that region and globally with respect to cyber resiliency as it relates to within Mac Macedonian interests and then outside. And that's, that's part of what we saw. And, and you asked why Macedonia when we looked at it economically, there are a number of things that we've seen over the years that have progressed within the Macedonian uh, government and amongst its people. And some of these include membership at NATO, uh, the progression towards uh, EU admission, and just the general progress continuing in spite of difficult times that we face today over the past 20 years, a continued steady growth rate. And we think that that creates an environment that is positive for a project like STP. And it also creates an opportunity, quite frankly, for the country to make a statement regionally. Uh, that this is the kind of effort that we look at if we want to be competitive in the 21st century and beyond. Now, Steve, when you, when you say cyber technology, a lot, lot of people are scared by the term. What, what exactly does this term mean? And most importantly, in terms of cybersecurity, what are the, the, the exact beneficials to, uh, to our people? Yeah, it, is, it, is, uh, it can be a, a frightening term in and of itself, because normally people that are not involved in this segment of our society only see cyber when it's mentioned publicly as a result of something being either hacked, compromised, or something <laughs> that is not good happening. The reality of it is this, uh, and Governor Ridge has said this many times, we are now in the 21st century and the digital environment that we operate in daily, whether you're a citizen that does nothing other than uh, labor in, in, uh, in a manual sense all the way through to the most advanced technology, Cyber issues are embedded within that fabric forevermore. And this comment he, he has made in the past, the digital sun will never set globally. It will simply get brighter and brighter. So our approach for cyber is not to become breathless and anxious about cyber as it relates to this ability for people to access my devices or endpoints as they're referred to in the way of laptops and things like that, but rather to be aware that it is a, an inherent business risk and a personal risk that we can manage. And that's what we refer to when we say cybersecurity or in our case, cyber resiliency, that we approach this challenge like many others with an effort to create an awareness of what we need to be doing as a company and what we need to be doing as a society to manage that risk and exposure of managing our lives with devices and technology, banking, hospital, whatever you might want to call it, in a way that we know we're secure. So our approach, uh, Errol, is to make sure that all elements of our client group and, and the society within we work have taken into account what they can to protect themselves and manage that risk. And that's what we do at Ridge Global in supporting our clients in looking at technologies and approaches that might help with that. Now, sir, uh, after the signing of the PRESPA agreement, North Macedonia entered uh, NATO. And uh, was actually this uh, what impacted your interest in investing here? And if that's well, it's why. It, it, it certainly helped, and I'll tell you why, because NATO, as you might expect, that level of support is important uh, regionally and globally. But more, from our perspective, as it relates to cyber, organizations like NATO have very sophisticated and evolved frameworks and guidance uh, that they have as it relates to cyber. And so the ability for a member nation like North Macedonia to tap into that capability to support its cyber resiliency needs and objectives 
is an important aspect. And it's important to us as a development group at STP that that capability exists. Uh, one of the things that we worked on in Europe that would su be supported by NATO is cyber resiliency that, that really it embraces the objectives of NATO, but also the satisfaction of things like what's called GDPR, which is a global data protection uh, regulation, which is an EU-wide uh, regulatory requirement that exists today. And so being a member of NATO is a Certain, certainly advantage and recognized uh, in the case of our interests uh, globally as an advantage. It's like you have a lot of uh, American individuals uh, from different sectors, economic culture, and distinguished American companies that are actually dedicated uh, to this project, or they want to be involved on the project, supporting it. Uh, is this project supported by the U.S. government? Uh, as a specific project, I would be surprised that it wouldn't be, but I can tell you this, that it aligns very neatly with the objectives if you look at where the State Department's public announcements are as it relates to North Macedonia. The recent meeting that the Secretary had with the, uh, the Prime Minister for Macedonia in Washington, I think a few weeks ago, just confirming the, uh, the fact that uh, U.S. interests are aligned with North Macedonia. I would add this, that we have a very good and ongoing strong relationship with the US commercial services offices, including uh, those in that region, and that they have been very supportive of, of our individual efforts to pursue projects like STP. So I'm inclined to believe, although they've not made an official statement, that they would be uh, very supportive of the effort there, because if you look at the objectives, it certainly aligns with a lot of those that our State Department's outlined. In the introduction that currently the project is being uh, reviewed or decided or awaiting approvals from the governmental authorities, are you familiar where is the process, where is the process uh, currently and who are the, the major decision makers on this one? Well, I, I know that the, one of the key points uh, as we are here sitting in, and speaking today, that for the past several months, uh, you know, we've been, we're waiting uh, the designation as a strategic investor status. And that's a key uh, designation as it relates to this project, because it, it certainly supports the designation in a way that, that suggests that the government would be supportive uh, beyond the efforts that are described in the uh, foreign uh, economic zone, the FDZs, but it would make it a priority consideration. And that's a strong message to send. I think that anytime you have a development group like ours, which is looking to make considerable investments in a location, it's good to know that the government would be supportive. And I might add that, that this kind of effort, because of the jobs that would be created for Macedonian citizens, at all levels, and because of the growth that it represents as what we would define as a platform economic development initiative, and by that it's got, it's got broad appeal across a multitude of sectors, that it would make sense that the Macedonian government, North Macedonian government would support it. And we've been involved in this discussion for a number of years, and what we've found, and I typically have found in my career uh, writ large, is that the political identity identification of whatever parties in power in any given locations typically looks at projects like this favorably because jobs are jobs for everyone, regardless of their political affiliation and economic impact is all positive. So the good news is that it's been generally supportive. The challenge we have in front of us is getting this strategic investor status granted. And I understand that that's, that's uh, in the works or being considered as we speak. And so hopefully that becomes a reality, and then that will really motivate and move us forward in a more rapid way. Now, Steve, uh, I understand that uh, in the near future, probably in the next uh, two to three weeks, you are planning a visit to North Macedonia to meet with the government officials. 
what would be the goal of this of these meetings? You, you you need to re-emphasize re-emphasize to them how important is the project and who exactly will you talk to? I mean, do you have already uh, agreed uh, meetings with them? Yeah, uh, we don't have a, a set meetings because I'm still working on schedule issues. But the short answer is yes, I intend to to take a visit to North, North Macedonia. I think it only makes practical sense if. I'm part of a group that's looking to invest considerable time, money, and effort in a region that we'd want to visit. And part of my background, quite frankly, has been a period of time where I did nothing but economic development work at a, at a, at a high level. And so for those reasons alone, just getting a, a better sense for the project within the community that it's targeted. The other the other point that you mentioned as, as that visit is... Uh, confirmed would be the opportunity to get in front of appropriate officials within the government just to enable them to see one of the representatives from the North American part of the effort uh, to be able to understand what the challenges they might be facing that would, we might be able to address and what we can uh, look to in the way of support from the government going forward, assuming that the strategic investor status is granted. And any questions that we can answer that, I think. Uh, sir, my last uh, question for, for tonight. Uh, if we consider the Ukraine crisis now, the war in Ukraine and the Russian aggression, do you think that this project now is m even more important for the security or, or, or of North Macedonia? And if so, why? I would... Uh... I'm not an expert, obviously, in, in some of these geopolitical conflicts, but this is one that everyone's aware of. And my personal viewpoint is that, yes, I believe that this project uh, would be important to continuing uh, progress with respect to, particularly from a cyber standpoint, security uh, and uh, awareness, if you will, of all of the interests that exist that can be uh, put at risk because of a conflict like this. But I would also add that these kinds of efforts and unfortunately these conflicts on a global scale exist and come and emerge at varying points in time. And that we still have to manage and progress in parallel track with what the conflict brings. But my personal belief is that this is the appropriate time. I might also add, in addition to the conflict, as you know, it's created a tremendous amount of economic stress all over the world with uh, issues that are now emerging with respect to inflation and economic impacts. Yet projects like this uh, continue to move forward. And so I'm inclined to believe that we continue to move forward. Sir. Thank you once again. Thank you very much for being part of this show. Uh, I wish you successful meetings with the uh, government uh, authorities on, the, on, on your meetings, on your visit here to North Macedonia. Have a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Errol. My pleasure. Pleasure to be with you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Debate Magazine Click Plus. I'm Errol Shakiri. Have a good night.